Hey Epoxy Enthusiasts, it's Dave here from Epoxy Emporium and I'd like to welcome you to our first video tutorial. We've had quite a large number of inquiries for classes, but instead of doing that, we've decided to make free classes online for anyone who wants to learn. We will be loading more tutorial videos in the future on epoxy countertops, epoxy flooring systems, river tables and just about anything you can think of doing with epoxy. So please follow our social media pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel for our future posts. For this episode, I'll be doing a step-by-step -step DIY guide on building a chopping board or serving board. First, we'll go through a list of essential items that you'll be needing before you're doing your first pour. Epoxy is really hard to remove, so I suggest you set up in your garage, workshop, studio or anywhere that should you mess, you won't be overly concerned. Having said that, buy yourself some pseudol adhesive remover, xylene or wet wipes. Either of these options will do the trick. You can find these products on our online store. I'll leave a link in the post so that you can find all the items that I use in the video. For this pour, you'll need epoxy resin, and I'll be using our 3kg pack of deep pour resin. Pigments, I'll be using our metallic black marker powder for this one. A cost effective scale, nothing too fancy, but it will need to go up in grams. A see through bucket, preferably, and mixing sticks. Gloves are essential. We highly recommend these grippers gloves. You'll need some pseudo two part super glue. This can be used with tape, but I will show you that technique in one of our future videos. Next, you'll need a mold or form. For the sake of keeping things simple, we'll be using our reusable HDPE mold. What makes these molds great is they're reusable. They don't leak, so you don't need silicone. They don't stick and they're nice and clean. I'll be posting more videos where I build my own molds with melamine using different techniques later on. First and foremost, when working with epoxy for any application, whether it be for counters, flooring or woodwork, Prep is the most important thing and I cannot stress this enough. If you do not take the time to prep properly for your projects, there will likely be failures. So here I'm preparing my wood before I pour. It's really important to get in every crack, hole and opening in your wood, as these may trap air and cause bubbles while your epoxy is curing. Here I'm working with wild olive wood and I've just run it through my planer, picked out all small bits of dirt I could find in the wood, then I gave it a light sand up to 180 grits to get rid of any marks left from the planer. We'll sand it properly again later when we release our board out of the mold. We also sell these pieces of wood cut to size for these molds if you'd like to purchase the wood from us. Now that my wood is clean and level, I put part one of my super glue on the wood itself and spray the activator on the base of the mold. Once you've sprayed your activator, be quick with putting your wood in the mold and press down firmly for 10 seconds. Check to see that the wood is securely glued down. We do this so that the wood doesn't float in the epoxy once we have poured it. Something to remember before you place the wood in the mold is to make sure the surface you're working on is level. Once the wood is placed in the mold and glued down, do not move the mold. This could release the super glue from the HDPE. Now that your wood is glued down, you can work out how much resin you need. I've written the calculation for this in the post, but it really isn't as complicated as it looks. All you have to do is measure the volume of your mold, length times breadth times height, then from that amount you minus the weight of your wood. That gives you the remaining weight inside the mold, which is the amount of resin you would need to fill the mold once the wood is in place. If you do not have access to a planer or a jump sander, I would suggest adding between 5 and 10% more resin to slightly cover the wood. This will make sanding the board down a little easier. After working out how much resin I need, I know my mixing ratio of my epoxy is 2 parts resin A to 1 part hardener B. It is always best to pour your resin A first and mix in your pigments before adding your hardener. Don't worry too much about the bubbles in your bucket while you pour the resin. Because of the slow curing process, these bubbles will have time to escape. Please remember that once you add your hardener, you have plus minus 40 to 60 minutes of pot life. For this board, I'm using black marker powder 
And because I'm pouring in the workshop and dust is a major concern, I'll be making the board a solid color. If you are aiming to pour an opaque board or a clear board, I would suggest doing the pour in an area that has as little dust as possible. Now that I have poured my resin A and mixed my pigments in, I'm adding my hardener pot B and mixing thoroughly. One of the biggest mistakes beginners make when working with epoxy is lack of thorough mixing. Mix for at least 3 minutes and scrape all the sides, corners as well as the bottom of your mixing bucket. Mix this thoroughly now for about 4 minutes and it's ready to pour. There is no real technique to pouring. The epoxy will do its own thing anyway. Just make sure you fill in any holes or cracks in the wood as well. You can see the measurements we took are pretty accurate and we have just enough epoxy. After pouring, I'm going to cover this mold. I used a separate mold that I have as a cover, but you can use anything that is flat and clean. I usually use a piece of melamine, but the additional mold works wonders. This helps avoid any dust or particles getting into your board while it cures. You'll need to leave this to cure for about 24 to 36 hours. The deeper your pour, the quicker the resin reacts and cures. Now I'm just popping this board out the mold and you can see it looks really great. For this step it helps to tap the underside of the mold with a mallet. The shockwave helps the epoxy release. Be patient with this step as some of the boards release easier than others. In my next video I'll be finishing this board off and giving tips on finishing. All our resin kits come with a user manual covering these steps in detail. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content, videos and tutorials.